Good morning. All I can say is, wow. <laughs> Note to self, don't speak after the incredible Lama al Musawi. So I want to congratulate uh, Lama and Fida for this incredible symposium. We would like to partner with Stanford in many things, including in women in data science, but also in fundraising. They seem to do it better than anyone these days. So ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and students, thank you for this opportunity to welcome you on behalf of the American University of Beirut to this conference on women in data science in partnership with Stanford University and its extraordinary institute for computational and mathematical engineering. This conference is truly an international affair with more than 75 locations hosting events around the world, including, as mentioned, two in the Middle East, in Doha and in Ramallah. I was checking some facts and figures about our principal partner today, Stanford, and noticed that it may have a slight competitive advantage over us in being home to no less than 20 living Nobel laureates, but we at AUB have bragging rights in that we're 20 years older than our Californian cousin. So we could say that we help teach them how to get Nobel laureates. <laughs> but seriously, it's a great honor to be collaborating with this exceptional seat of learning and progressive thought and transformative research for this conference. And I do hope that it can be the model for a real future collaboration and cooperation between our global educational systems. As you all know, AUB just finished celebrating its 150th anniversary. And it's keenly felt that our institution is at an inflection point in its lifetime, coming out of the sesquicentennial celebrations and moving boldly into an ambitious capital campaign, which we've appropriately named Boldly AUB, the campaign to lead, innovate, and serve. It's also true that the world is at an inflection point. I'm not talking about the dawning of the Trump era. In fact, the less I speak about that, probably the better for all of us. <laughs> Although from the first couple of weeks, it does seem we may be in for some surprises. But one not major surprise is we in the United States elected a president who seems to be doing for once everything he said he was going to do. So I uh, also intend on behalf of our administration, our leadership, for us to do everything we say we're going to do. I'm talking about the pivot point which is happening around us with the explosion of new technology, new data, and their implementation. It's being called the fourth industrial revolution, or 4IR, understanding how significant we are, a point we're at in this society as the digital age metamorphoses and becomes embedded in human society and in economic activity. Whether it's the internet of things, wearable tech, or big data transforming business, healthcare, education, unknown combinations of the above, we know that in the future and very soon, people's lives are going to be changed beyond recognition as this new age unfolds. And that is a disorienting phenomenon. Institutions like AUB are poised not just to be shaped by these developments, but also to help shape the emerging world that is appearing before our eyes at this most challenging, exciting time. Ever since its founding in 1866, this institution has been a pioneer of new knowledge and new expertise. It was always the first to introduce the most advanced technology practices and ideas to this part of the world. And more importantly, it hasn't just passively adopted trends from outside, but it's developed its own vernacular usage underpinned by our prevailing mission to serve society around us while embracing diversity and eliminating discrimination. In that spirit, AUB is determined to lead the way in utilizing big data for societal change and inclusive economic development. We may be an educational rather than a campaigning organization, but our values impel us to fight, nonviolently of course, for transparency, transparency, for inclusivity, for empowerment, 
and to ensure that the digital divide does not drive our most vulnerable groups into even greater marginalization and despair. But it also impels us to speak the truth and acknowledge that we are behind in creating a knowledge society and a knowledge economy. As well as we have done at AUB, if you travel this country, which I've had the opportunity to do in the last 18 months, it is clear that implementation of the knowledge society and the knowledge economy has a long way to go. So if we are going to serve, we need to start by empowering the folks that we have here on campus and by treating them fairly, and that starts with fairness for women. This is first and foremost a global data science conference, but I'm very mindful and frankly happy that it's being staged under the banner of women in data science, and I wholeheartedly endorse that. I think we have supported a number of initiatives that make, su make sure that women's voices are heard in full, and I hope this will encourage other women to play their full part in this new industrial age, both in AUB and beyond. AUB has shown itself to be perhaps the most progressive organization in this part of the world when it comes to advancing and empowering the role of women in academia and in society. Uh, having said that, I was a little bit taken aback when the first government formed in Lebanon since I returned had one woman, my classmate, Anaya Zedin, from AUB as a minister out of 30. So I take that as our fault. We haven't done enough as a university or as a group of universities because at AUB we can have no excuses. We were the first to welcome women as students, the first to appoint them as faculty, among the first in the world to appoint them, or certainly in this region, as deans and to top academic offices. Of course there's much further to go, but I sincerely hope that I will be among the last, if not the last, of an unbroken line of men who've held the position of president. So yes, STEM and gender equity should converge at AUB. We educate just as many women as we do men, and we educate them to become doctors and engineers and businesswomen and men and leaders and humanists. But what we've consistently said since we started about 18 months ago is that AUB is here to model a fair and just society and not just to talk about it, even though we're not there yet. Why is it particularly important in this field, the area of data science, to show that it is every bit as much of a woman's world as it is a man's? And yes, I have a personal stake being the son of a woman who is a data scientist. But from my perspective, there are three elements that make this an unarguable fact. The first is practical. Diversity is a key guarantee ensuring that big data is exploited for the benefit of everyone in society. Some of you will recall that the first interactions of eye tracking or face recognition software failed when they were confronted by a person of color, an African American because they could not see a human being. Why? Because all the prototypes had been tested on white Western subjects. An embarrassing and shaming moment for the technology industry perhaps, but also a learning moment. The difference is the technology industry has learned from it and has overcome it in a way faster than society as a whole has. This proves, if proof were even necessary, that the inclusion of underrepresented groups is essential in creating a more balanced and effective digital toolkit for the service of all mankind. Second, while we say that we have the opportunity to model a fair and more just society, we are also seeking the most competitive society possible. Competitive in the best sense of the word. Collegial competitiveness. Unless we show that this is a great place for us, and for the between 53 to 55 percent of the citizens of the planet that are women to thrive and prosper in whatever field they choose, will never be a truly competitive institution in a diverse society. Finally, the beauty of inclusivity and diversity is that it benefits not just those with improved access, but it actually helps the whole team become more adaptable, more aware, 
and it encompasses far richer experiences and perspectives and skills. So together, we're looking ahead to a very stimulating day of panels and presentations that will showcase the amazing talents and insights of our women faculty at AUB, at Stanford, and guests from around the world from academia, including a, a, a very old friend. Surprise. It will be, I'm sure, a remarkable experience, especially for our students who get an opportunity to be exposed to truly world-class and cutting-edge knowledge creation and opportunities. Data science is a very, very new field, certainly much younger than either AUB or Stanford. But it's developing at such a bewildering pace that the months and years that we're currently living today will soon seem like a late stone age to future generations. I'm genuinely proud and optimistic that AUB has and will continue to take the lead regionally in this brave new world. With these fabulous women faculty, how could we not? So I wish you the very greatest success with today's conference. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs>